if the overworld is somewhat like naturalistic or realistic like in its feel and soundscape the nether is an alien dimension things don't sound natural or realistic at all in the nether the warped forest is a really like weird biome something in the forest really like disrupts reality i, I can't really tell you what's going on i don't think even music can play in the warped forest i don't know but maybe the enderman can tell you what's up The Crimson Forest, an easter egg for creating this sound, is that most of them were created using balloons because it creates a, like a disturbing feeling of something that is like stretching and forcing itself to bend. So the Soul Sand Valley, I would say like this biome is really ghostly. And if you listen closely, maybe you'll hear what the souls are trying to tell you. When you design ambience for a certain biome or place in a game, you always start with nothing. You have the visuals and then you have to fill it in with sound. And when it comes to the Basalt Deltas, I was a bit confused about interpreting the visuals. So when Brandon came up with the keyword radiation, I suddenly knew what I was looking at and therefore could interpret it into sound. With the new Nether music, um, we looked at each of the individual biomes and we decided, you know, which which biome felt right for the music piece. However, we didn't have a piece for the basalt deltas. So what I did is I played all the music aloud and then we kind of sat down and we thought, you know, which piece of music out of what we had would fit this one the best. We all discussed it for a while and uh, in the end uh, we chose the same sounds that uh, plays the Soul Sand Valley, the same piece of music. now associate that track with the spookiness that we have with the Soul Sand Valley and they kind of see that it blends well with the creepiness of the basalt deltas with the overarching pillars. With the Warp Forest biome, however, we decided to specifically have no music at all. Players left with just the ambient sounds. They have to consider the environment around them. They don't have any of the emotion that we try to give them with music anymore. That's to try and communicate the strangeness of the forest and the strange materials around them and the very foreign environments. Uh, I saw one comment from a fan that was quite interesting. It was, oh, surely we could just drop music into the game. Oh, that shouldn't be so hard, you know? But selecting the tracks and finding where they should go and even finding where in the code how they should play, that's quite a lot of work. And I spent a lot of time uh, looking at how the biomes should have individual tracks and seeing how we could remove the dependency on what world you're in, what dimension you're in, and how you're playing the game in creative or in survival mode. All that was mixed together with the music. But we really had to tease out all the details and unwind this spider web that we created. I've voiced many mobs in Minecraft since I started in the 1.9 update. Witch to Shulker to Piglin, different illagers, and it's always a different approach to them. We knew from the get-go that the Piglins should have a base of pig. So I went to a place south of Stockholm to record some pigs. It was like an old Swedish type of farmyard swine, I think is the word. And they were extremely chill and boring, very like monotonous. So in the game later, it ended up using like only a smart part of those recordings and I voiced the rest myself. <laughs> when Brandon showed me the striders for the first time in game, they made me think of some sort of alien insect or frog or something like that. So at that moment, I took a toy from my son, which I think is called like a click clack hedgehog. And it makes these cute clicky noises. And when you spin it around, it's like... Click, click, click. I combined that with my voice to put some more emotion into it. And there was the sounds for the strider. 
<laughs> we try to make sure that the sound experience for the Nether is the same no matter where you play Minecraft and how you play Minecraft. One of the more difficult aspects would be the actual sound files themselves, depending on which platforms we are targeting. It's all very well. We can make a very massive sound library. We can have thousands and thousands of sounds just to play in the nether in every single biome. But that's not going to work on every platform. We have to target the very bottom end and the very top end, no matter where you want to play Minecraft. And all these different devices expect different audio formats. And they say, we can't play this many channels of audio. There's all sorts of things to consider. So we had to try and pick the best sounds. We just reduced the number of them and we made sure they're the right percentage chance for something to play. I think a general misconception about creating sounds for video games is that people think you're either working with music or you're like a sound engineer. The interesting part for me is the design and the creative output of making these things from nothing into something that is really impactful for the players. 